Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back for day two of this Adobe Live. I'm your host, Fabiola Lera. We're back with the husband and wife art duo, Matt and Roxy Ortiz of Wooden Wave Art. Hello, hello, guys. Welcome back. Hi. Um, are you guys for having us? Yes. Are you guys excited for day two of your piece? We are. Pretty, pretty pumped. Let's I'm <laughs> so, 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 so pumped to see this come to life even further. Now, before we get to work, if you missed the previous stream, don't worry. You can view the replay on Behance or YouTube. Plus, check out illustrator Ava Redamonti as she creates surreal drawings in Adobe Fresco and Photoshop. And don't miss the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Andrew Hockerdell every weekday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific right before the stream. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. And don't forget, you can always replay our live streams even when we're offline. So bookmark this page so you can come back to it whenever you need a, a little refresh from these two. And whether you're tuning in from YouTube or Behance, remember to drop your questions for us today in the chat. We want to hear from you. We want to hang out with you guys. So please don't be shy. All right, uh, Matt and Roxy, let me take a look at the chat. We have Raul, we have Arshad, we have RB. Ooh. Everyone's joining us here in the chat. Um, oh. It's finally time to get to work. So why don't you guys all reintroduce right. yourselves Fuck and you. for, for all the newbies who are joining us today, and then tell us what we're gonna work on today. All right, hi. Well, hi. we're a husband and wife duo, like she said, mm -hmm. and we are artists, we do fine art, we do uh, illustration, digital illustration, uh, murals. Mm -hmm. So we do art both big and small. <laughs> yes. Commercial and personal work, I'm assuming too, right? You're working across different exactly. mediums. Yeah. All right. You're on Instagram, um, we're wooden underscore wave. Um, and we do, as we're scrolling here, so you can see these kind of fantastical tree houses that we do. We love to make work that's inspired by nature and also the idea of sustainability and play. So yeah. we have some tree houses here that you can check out. This one's in the shape of a boom box. This one's over the water. Um, we love the ocean and we're really inspired by it. So you can see some here as well. And so today it's very fitting that we're doing a whale, a whale shark. shark illustration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, in honor of the hashtag create waves campaign between Adobe and the ocean agency. It makes so much sense that we're here live with you two creating this piece. Um, I'm so excited to see how we develop it further from yesterday. So um, ooh, let's have a little technical hiccup here. Let's see. All right. Are we let's back? see. There we go. Let's Trying see, to let's see. share the Are iPad. We back? Now we're going to see the piece where we left All it right. off yesterday. We there we go. Perfect. Okay, great. So um, yeah, give us a little recap as to what we did yesterday for those who maybe missed it, who can yep. also catch the replay, um, and then what we're up to today. Great. Okay. So recap yesterday, we did a lot of whale shark drawing with just the pencil tool. Um, and we focused on really building volume around those whale sharks, uh, pulling from inspiration photos that we kind of arrayed around the composition. And you can see that we really, we're just trying to get like the compositional flow of the piece. Today's goal, which we're really excited about is we're gonna introduce more color. And it's a little bit of a pivot from what our plan was originally where we were gonna go a lot more monochromatic, but now we're thinking, I don't know, just color is such a fun thing. So today I'm going to be diving into using tools like the magic wand, um, some transparency locks and just multiple layers and different brushes. So it's going to be super fun. And um, actually as a palette kind of, we were thinking of, of colors the other night and we were thinking of, this is a poster Roxy and I did recently and it actually features a whale shark in that corner. But just sort of talking about like our favorite kind of colors are a little bit off muted blues, greens and something like that. I might be using the ink dropper tool today to just sort of pull colors from either the reference photos 
or from this poster that we did for Jack Johnson's Meet the Moonlight tour that's coming up, which we're yeah. super st stoked that we did that poster because that was kind of always a, a that's goal a of ours. List, yeah, that's a bucket list project I, there. I yes. Oh my Especially gosh, being from that Hawaii. poster looks amazing. Thank it you. makes so much sense um with the subject matter that we're dealing right. with today it's like mm -hmm. i can definitely see the connections there so may as well kind of use that Might same well. color palette or a variation of it yeah. to influence influence today's piece i love it and i think that's working smarter not harder cool. which yeah. i always <laughs> love to go. see and something right? i brought up yesterday that's kind of fun is i i use a keyboard um i'm working on an ipad obviously in fresco um, but the keyboard is Bluetooth to my iPad, which allows me to do stuff like, and hopefully everything's synced up right now, my phone. So I can toggle between um, my brush, my erase tool, just by pressing E. Um, say if I want to do ink dropper, which I will be doing, I'll just do I, and I'll just go straight to that. So I can kind of move quickly yes, it's like having my hand off. Right. It's like having a like a little virtual assistant or something yeah. as opposed to as opposed to having to tap right. around the screen frantically. Yeah. I, I like it. And I think it makes a lot of sense, too, because I'm sure you guys have a lot of experience with um, other Adobe programs. And so once you have mm. your shortcuts, they yes. kind of are similar across it programs is. and it feels more natural. Right. Than like Adobe's good that way. Leaving they your shortcuts all by yourself, you know, behind yeah. you. You want to keep your shortcuts. Oh, no. I feel exactly. Like <laughs> no, right. definitely. So this composition, you worked on this yesterday on the live stream. So give us your, like, I want to know where your head's at. What are you thinking? Yes. Give me a little more context here. Great. Okay. So I actually have, um, and this is something that we'll oftentimes do is instead of just trying to do a more finished, uh, treatment on all mm -hmm. of the sharks, uh, what I went ahead and did, um, is I started to I can turn on these layers. I started doing some outlining um, of those pencil layers because okay. if I want to use the magic wand tool, if I go ahead and press W uh, and I select, you know, outside here, we'll go ahead and select that. You can see that because it's a closed line and because I used uh, a different brush, and let's go to our brushes really quick and kind of show you what I'm using today. Yes. I am loving right now this Blake pen. Um, okay. And it's great because of the way that uh, they'll they'll keep your recent brushes saved. So I have my Blake pen. I've got Chunk, which I used yesterday. But also today I'm going to be using some really painterly brushes, like the Smoke Billow brush, um, Cezanne, and Impressionist. Yes. And those are kind of brushes to create like a really nice texture and blends with colors. So anyways, Ooh, going back to the wall wait. selection. That's a lot of really yeah. fun brushes. I mean, I just want to give a little call out for those mm -hmm. who are watching um, and want to get access to those brushes. They come with Adobe Fresco already. That I think that's something really cool that a lot of the um, brushes are already free and included. So if you yeah. want to try these exact brushes out, you can. Yep. Um, and I don't know if you guys have done it, but you can always download even more brushes for free yeah. from Kyle T. Webster, which is always crazy because he has so many brushes. You can really like get lost in a fun way. Totally. Um, so I just want to point that out for anyone watching who is interested in getting these brushes. You can and they're free. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. It's like a kid in a candy store. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you want great. it. You got it. Yes. So let me just uh, real quickly show you what the next steps will be. We'll outline all the sharks. Okay. And then using the magic wand tool, I'll select and maybe do an inverse selection to fill in those sharks, but on a separate layer. So I'll always keep my outline layers separate from my color layer. So this color layer right mm. here, if I can um, reveal that with. All right. So you can see how okay. when I turn that on and off, you can see how using a textured Cezanne brush mixed with maybe like the impressionistic brush, it's, it's already creating this rich tone. Um, and I'm still using, say, like the sketch outline below um, to sort of show where the volume, those those contour lines that we had, still showing those contour lines, um, but it's all set to multiply on your on your layer transparency settings. Oh, show us that, that if you can, okay, just in sure. case. Yeah, so I'm like, show are. us the exact thing that you're doing right. so that anyone awesome. uh, who's watching and is just like, yeah. I want to know that trick can get oh, it. Oh, man. So I remember the first time I learned the multiply transparency function, it kind of like, it really changed a lot of my art making uh, yeah. digitally. And if you go into your, so select your layer, and then you go into your the little layer toggle on the side there. 
um, and you see this blend mode is multiply. And what that does is it turns your color into a transparency, like as if you had painted on top of a sheet of transparency, but all the colors as well. And so what that does is also mix the colors below with the color that you've painted. Um, the normal. I love it. I that. love it because this is a really easy way to build up yeah. color, which I can see already right. just knowing your work. Like I can see how it's super handy for you to layer mm -hmm. those colors together, yep. especially when we're talking about light. Um, so I'm into it. I can see what you're doing here and I love it. Um, what about the layers? Are you, are you, are you drawing each shark like each shark on a different layer how do you mm, uh, how are you going to approach that in terms of just organization because you have so many similar mm -hmm. like they're all sharks mm -hmm. so you could technically work in one big layer but something yeah. about that feels intense. yeah that's a good question <laughs> um you know one thing i pro i think i'll probably be working with all the sharks on one layer but i do recommend uh, a lot of times having more layers is just a safety precaution. Yes, exactly. Always move things back and forth. But I think for this one, um, for the simplicity of not having a uh, thousand layers. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> you have like 16 it. sharks yeah. there or something. Got a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I'll just I've... keep that, that clean line on one layer. I'll keep the pencil layer separate because I don't necessarily want to keep that. And okay. then all the colors will be on one layer as well. Okay. So we're, we're thinking primarily three base layers. I'm assuming you mm -hmm. may add more details on right. more layers or something like that, but Stylish. just so that everyone Stylish. knows exactly, yeah, how he's working. I like to ask him like, what is going on with these layers? Everyone approaches layers very differently. There right. are some artists who are just like, oh, I work only on like two layers for the whole piece, yeah, which is some... which is very intimidating to me um, as an indecisive person who needs to have every layer just in case. Right. Um, so I like to see your approach here. Yeah, okay. And, and what's mm -hmm. going on with this uh, blue? Great. Okay. So this, <laughs> another addition. And, and yesterday we talked a little bit about how um, if I go to our original kind of idea, we were going really stark and thinking very graphic in nature, almost like a printmaking or a Sumi ink kind of yeah. thing. I think we're going to pivot a bit and go a little bit more painterly um not necessarily this is the final look but mm -hmm. i kind of imagined these sharks slowly swimming into the murk or the depths of the stars yeah. and the beautiful thing is like you don't always have to treat a night sky as black it can be a dark rich purple or blue or dark green and so we're gonna we're gonna play around with um color palettes i've got a little color swatch here you can see that i just sometimes Cute. i actually add that to the side even though you do have a really wonderful palette selection tool. If you go down to that lower left hand corner and you pull up the themes, you can create your own swatches. Um, I personally like this first theme right here where it shows, you know, that color, that color, that those are nice, nice kind of colors I almost pulled from. But again, I think today I'll be pulling a little bit from this color scheme because I've already sort of worked that out and um, yeah. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I feel like that color scheme may work perfectly fine, but yeah. then if you want to add, yeah, like that orange that you have mm -hmm. right now or yep. the like pinkier color, it could work for certain things. I like that you're telling us here how you're pivoting because yesterday we were talking about right. that those flames might look like flames as opposed to, you know, waves or whatever. And now you're like, oh, <laughs> we just problem solved by taking a yeah. slightly different approach. Yeah. And I think that's smart. And it goes to show like, sometimes in the middle of creating something you have to switch just to get your vision across yeah. a little bit better um so i'm down cool. i feel like it's cool to see things change and see how you're kind of making those decisions yeah. um and i can see the painterly style is going to work perfect for this i feel yeah, like, I think like so. it's going to work really well and um it makes sense because they're bottom feeders right yeah so, like they well, would be going into the depths they definitely go to the very deepest uh, reaches and they also come up to the surface to eat the plankton. So it's like they live in the whole realm of the ocean mm -hmm. and we know so little about them. So there is a certain mystery. They are very mysterious. Animals. Swimming <laughs> into the depths. Yes, oh, it, it their food. own mystery gives you some flexibility, right? Right. Uh, it's like, that. who knows? Nobody really knows. Nobody so really knows, not? so we can do whatever we want. I love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah. let's see. I'm gonna it's fun ahead. to play around with color. Yesterday when um, someone in the chat had asked that question about what our favorite color mm -hmm. palette is, later we were talking about it and we had talked about how the, um, you know, the muted color palette is something that we really enjoy. And recently on the poster, that's something that we use. But then we were thinking about our work that uh, people usually see is actually very bright and saturated and has a lot of that punch. Right. Um, so it's funny how the the styles or the colors that you use are different, like depending on the emotions or the piece that you're mm -hmm. Yeah, or like the season that you are in in your career, or maybe mm -hmm. you just did a bunch of really bright posters. So now naturally you're like moving away from that. <laughs> By the time that it's uh, published too, and the and the time that you're working, yeah. is it can vary and you can have a, a bit of a color palette right. shift. Oh, um, definitely. So we've, I feel like we've it's looked natural. at past work that way, where we we're just like, wow, it would look so different if we were to approach that same project now. Even if the image is the same, you know, the color palette would be different and would be more subtle in certain areas or that kind of thing. I totally um, agree. I've seen some artists who uh, redo work, previous work, just to see how they would do it yeah. worth where they're at today. Is that something you would ever consider uh, approaching? I don't know if we'd ever go back unless it's Always. a piece that we just really, really love. And, right. it, you know, we'd want to retune it. I think because we have so many ideas of pieces that we want to do, it's hard for us to go back to go to back something right. else. We're just like, one, no, we need to. One thing we've done a lot next idea. of is the boombox. We have done that one quite a few yeah, times. Yeah, the boombox treehouse. We've done three murals of that one in yeah. different places. So we have a boombox mural here in Hawaii, one oh. in Worcester, Massachusetts, Worcester. and then um, we're actually no, we have two here in Hawaii. Two in Hawaii That's yeah. the, oh, amazing! Yeah. Um, and and those are prints. are those like exact replicas or are they variations? Variations. variations. I love yeah, that. So that's Matt's example of one that we actually have changed up a, a bit. I like that idea of seasons of art or seasons of anything in your of life. Anything, you know? yes. I yeah. feel like that's yeah. how it is because like you can uh, like we were talking about earlier be obsessed with like one technique for a while and then you do a bunch of stuff in it and you're like okay I'm done I'm ready to move on <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, as, as your own natural curiosity as artists kind of shifts and evolves right. um speaking mm -hmm. of that right mm -hmm. are there any materials or techniques that you guys used to use a lot that you don't really use anymore um like Ooh. previous seasons mm, well we used to be printmakers so we used yeah. to screen print all our images um and then that was that phase or season. <laughs> Remember how we don't do it at all anymore. We would always just be thinking of it in terms of how many color, how many screens would this be? This right. Piece? Yes, that's this totally a different way of thinking than yeah. mm -hmm, like working no right now on this iPad where you right. could just add infinite amounts of colors. Right. Yeah. yeah if, no, if no one knows what we're talking about when we say screens for screen printing, for each color that you want, let's say on this, a t-shirt design or something or a print that's screen printed every color is its own screen. So when you're thinking of an image, you know, with this illustration that we have back here has, you know, I don't know, a um, hundred colors or something. Yeah. <laughs> so this would be something we wouldn't screen print. No, um, hopefully not. But yeah, so you would always have to kind of distill and simplify your image into maybe four or five colors. There's something nice about that though, the, mm -hmm. the economy of having, and we actually talked a little bit off air about how when you have too many options, sometimes it's nice to like restrict yourself willingly or unwillingly and you'll you'll find some interesting results it's just creative a different boundaries muscle are, are yeah good. creative boundaries are good i think yeah. like you it lets you play within a certain area you know when you have too many options mm -hmm. they call it analysis paralysis where it's <laughs> oh, just yeah. you spend so much time analyzing and questioning what you're going to do that you don't actually do anything you're just kind of paralyzed by your options so it's like i totally you, totally vibe with that i, I need i need to pare it down and i think like for example in this piece you pare down the brushes that you're gonna use to like the those i think like five or six yeah. and i think that helps create cohesion within the piece mm -hmm. naturally but mm -hmm. imagine if you were just looking at every single brush you could spend a day just deciding like the top mm -hmm. brushes for me. one piece exactly Definitely. exactly <laughs> No, you know, easily. You just get stuck playing like, oh, this one looks fine. Oh, this one yeah, looks like fine. you could draw the whale shark with a different brush probably yeah. for days and just try and figure out which one like was, quote, the best. Right. right. But it's arbitrary, ultimately. Well, um, so talking about brushes, if I could just kind of give you guys a little insight on, on this brush and why I chose it. Um, so this Blake brush, it's almost got a like if I were to just pull a line and vary my 
pen pressure. It's got a mm -hmm. nice uh, sensitivity Ooh. to it, but it also has a little bit of a warble. Like it's not, it's not overly smoothing the brush for me. Let me um, see. Zoom, zoom in real good for us. And then it's like, also got a little texture to it. It's got a little um, what do you, what would you call it? A tooth, tooth to it. Yes. Yeah, a tooth to it. And uh, again, I, I think we're drawn to whether it's digital or not. We're drawn to things that feel a little hand drawn. Mm -hmm. And so even though I'm looking to create a closed shape, like I'm going to turn this shark yeah. into pretty much a closed shape because I am going to use the magic wand tool to select the interior of that shark and then color okay. it on another layer. I still want to keep a little bit of that sense of grit. Yes, I know what you mean. I think it yeah. kind of gives it that like hand drawn liveliness mm -hmm. that can be hard to create with like mm -hmm. a pen tool and illustrator, right? It would yes. be so slick. Right. Um, it would have a totally different feeling to it. Right. So I totally understand that. And I'm so glad you gave us a little insight as to that because there are so many brush possibilities and i think this so one nice. really kind of nails what you're after that hand-drawn yeah. hand-drawn feel um and you i'm can warming always... up too i feel a little like i feel a little wiggly like i think as you go on you also warm up your hands so sometimes people do exercises before they start that's so, so so true we'll you can back. also play with that smoothing and if yeah, you play true. with the smoothing it'll like yeah, naturally um i'm at one so let's Increase so this is smoothing. all you? Oh my gosh. I thought the smoothing was like on, but like limited. I haven't had my coffee crazy. yet. So it's like, yeah. it's not smooth. I need my coffee. Or maybe I'm shocked. I'm looking at the chat. I'm like, can you guys believe that? Um, okay. So yeah, do something <laughs> dramatic right. so we can see the difference between right. like you smoothing. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then let's do the non-smoothing. The non. That's where you were at. Okay. Yeah. You see, you'll see it. <laughs> but that gives it that adds to that hand drawn feel right if you use that smoothing too much you would kind of lose that yeah mm -hmm. i like a little precision so I, I don't mind the warbles but um i think it is something too like when viewers see digital art you know sometimes they don't really think so much of an artist being behind it you know even right. if something is really smooth like it took somebody a long time to create that illustration that you're seeing yeah um Whereas if you have something that looks hand-drawn, I think it slows people down a little bit, even if it's digitally created, because then they can sense like, oh, somebody actually drew that, you yeah. know? So I think there's yes. a little bit Oh, more you're totally, totally art. right. You're totally right. Like if something is, even if you did the same thing and let's say use the vector brushes or Illustrator, yeah. people would definitely think it was like, it just looks easier because it mm -hmm. seems yeah. like seamless, like shapes. Right. As yeah. opposed to this, you can really get that sense of like anatomy and precision that it takes mm -hmm. to create it. So oh, mm -hmm. you're totally right. That's a really, really good point. And I feel like with your work specifically, it can be so intricate. Like you're talking about the boom boxes. If mm -hmm. any viewers haven't um, seen it, make sure to check it out on their Instagram, Wooden, Wooden Wave Art. Um, but they're so, so intricate. And I'm immediately shocked at how much effort they require. Because I can <laughs> sense, even if Thanks. you're making it in Illustrator, even if you're making it um, mm. in Fresco, it's still so much detail to like think yes. out. So Thanks. I yeah. respect, respect. <laughs> That's why most of our pieces take, um, I don't know, weeks. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah, we, <laughs> Ooh, we're, we're not, I we don't know. move super fast, yeah. We don't, it's just all of the time. Even though there's two of the you? Yeah. I know, right? Imagine if it was just one. No. You get like oh one piece a year. Yes, yeah. no, it, it'd be a really I mean, good piece. It would be one it'd be really a good, good piece. piece. But, <laughs> but I mean, that just piece. goes to show, like, it, it takes time to create work, and yeah. these tools, like Adobe Fresco and Photoshop, which I think you use sometimes, um, are just there to assist. But you still, it still takes like so much vision oh, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know artistic input to get that output. Yeah. It's not magic. No, <laughs> no it's not. it is work. Yeah, it is, it is work. work. So you were saying you're going to outline these sharks and then yes. you're going to use what Outlines. tool? The oh, the lasso tool, I think it was. Yeah, lasso tool. Let's actually, let me just, um, why don't we just do a little test right now and I'll talk. Let's do it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we can talk so, a little bit about it. Um, this shark that I just finished here or I just started will not be completely filled in with, or not completely outlined. So that'll um, not be part of not it. Not be a part of it. But these other two should be closed and when cool. i say closed i mean mm -hmm. like you're looking to see if you have any gaps 
like uh, Roxy pointed out, maybe there, even just points where your line quality maybe got a little thinner mm -hmm. and it might bleed in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select my magic wand tool. I can press W on my keyboard, okay. or I can go over there and you can see that highlight tool. Inside of that selection tool, you've got your magic wand tool. And that's just basically gonna go, and when I drop inside of the negative space around these sharks, and it's gonna, it's gonna take a little while because it's probably thinking. And right now you're on the layer that has yeah. those outlines, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look at this one shark. This shark here, I'm on the um, the outline layer. This shark did well. It is fully enclosed. Because what you're reason, looking, tell, tell us what you're looking for specifically, just yeah. for those who have never worked with the magic wand tool. Gotcha. So I'm going to show you the difference between, say, this shark, which you see these, is they're called the marching ants, these mm -hmm. dotted lines that are moving around the exterior. I had selected outside of that shark outline, and it selected all the space around there, and it goes and it bleeds all the way up to where it hits a line, and then it stops. Now, if that line is an enclosed shape like this shark is, It'll just go around it and select everything on the outside. This which shark what on you the other want. hand, you're right. Something happened on this one, which I'm gonna just uh, deselect by hitting my command D. Well, we can tell because the the fin on the inside, on that lower part of it, got uh, it like marching ants. Yeah, there sorry. was marching ants so, within the shark. On the inside, right? within the, on right. the inside. So what we know is that Starts there's a little again. leak or basically like a little gap or a yeah, break in the that. line of the outside. And it? that's how it somehow got in there. Right, so you need to find the leak. Let's find it. <laughs> They're like regular ants. They will find a hole. Oh, there it is. Right yeah. in there. Found it. There's the culprit. <laughs> All right. So now that's a good lesson. There you go. That was the shaky That's where hand. the ants found a way into the house. <laughs> that's the reality. Like when you're creating reality. these pieces, right? Like All sometimes right. you nail it and sometimes you have to go back a little bit. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So now let's try again wand tool wand. okay I select in that negative space around the sharks it's gonna go ahead and do that Looks and like it worked. one thing nice. i um, recommend is go ahead and also mess around you see this toolbar here that i'm toggling mm -hmm. this is your color margin tool or tab <laughs> and if slider. you move, yeah, <laughs> slider slider thank you i'm short for words today so if you slide that up a bit and you create a, a, a larger color margin, it's actually gonna do something interesting where, like if I had the color margin set to zero and I um, then I go to my paint bucket tool and let's say, um, well, because I want to, because I wanna fill in the sharks, I'm actually gonna do this right here. I'm gonna go to my more function and I'm gonna invert selection. So okay. inverting the selection means that now it doesn't look like anything changed, but now the marching ants are in the same place, but they're actually selecting the interior. And so yeah, everyone follows along. It's basically, I want to, I want to paint the sharks. So the easiest way to paint the interior of the sharks is to select the outside and then invert it. Invert it. Yeah. All right. So now that I've done that, if I go ahead and I change layers, I'm going to go to my color layer. And uh, I believe I'm because then that's about. faster than having to select each individual shark. Thank People you. are like, why don't you just select the part that you want to be actually right. picking? Then you'd have but to it's more work to go around. We and have like 10 shots. sharks here, yeah, right? Exactly. So it would be a just lot of layering, once. <laughs> click once on the background and then mm -hmm. invert, and there you go. And then you have okay. all of them selected. Right. So now I have those two sharks selected, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and change brushes. I changed to my painterly Cezanne brush, okay. Cezanne. And then I'm gonna select a color by just holding my finger on the on the shark screen. there on the screen, and it'll select instantly that eyedropper. And let's see. Oh, look at that! Nice. And now you can color like without paying attention to the lines, right? Right. Because it's, it's cutting it for you, the outline. For me, yeah. And that's it's so rewarding when you can just sort of. Do Not that. Have to worry about yeah. the background. You do a little bit of legwork of setting up your um, your files. You set up your line work, make everything nice and closed. Clean. Yeah, and clean. And if you look at this brush, you see how it's kind of leaving these these um, they, kind of splotchy like patterns. A bit. Yeah, I kind of like that. But I can also go and change that in my brush settings and oh, not in my smoothing in your. In your brush settings, you can go ahead and like I think what it's doing is it's probably 
it's probably scattering more or stamping maybe stamping more so Could if i stamp either. oh it, yeah okay great so if i increase the stamp count we get a more unified Smooth line smoother yeah. piece so maybe i'll do that because it was those are some large stamps looks like big scales there that's a lot cleaner but what's okay. beautiful about this brush is even when i go over that previous stroke it's still there it kind of creates a i don't know a depth that's and a nice I totally see that. Yeah, I feel like it definitely lends itself to feeling a, a, less flat, which yeah, right. depth, right? You're creating, you can see like the digital paint layers, which yeah. is rewarding. And what I think is really cool about using this technique as opposed to, because you in theory, you could go in with this brush and color the sharks. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, you're going to have like this outline area with this brush that is uneven or it's going to be the brush itself as opposed to this clean right. cut line so right. i think that's something cool to point out is like you're mm -hmm. getting the texture of this brush in the exact shape that you want by yep. using this technique as opposed to free handing mm -hmm. free filling it in just like right really nilly. totally yeah totally. <laughs> and so you have some one other one other thing that's really cool about having your colors all separated from your um, outlines is let's say that I'm not really liking the color of the sharks, but I like um, the patterning maybe that I've created. Um, so if I were to, let's say, okay, let's go ahead and for example, I'm gonna go ahead and put, oh, that's a really large brush, mm -hmm. but let's bring it down. What if I give it some stripes in there? This is just kind of an experiment I'm sort of thinking right now about, okay. but within this color layer yeah let's see if it works folks <laughs> i'm just it's an experiment i'm hoping it works okay that's kind of cool so i've got these stripes in there i think i'm feeling looking at this and i'm feeling like it's a little too green i want to move it like we we're saying maybe a little more blue i think i can go ahead and i can lock transparency so okay. let's see what happens when you lock transparency it should hmm, this might be a little tricky it should. I'm fascinated right now. I can't wait to see where this goes. <laughs> and let's change our color to we'll go ahead and move. I love these color sliders because I can just go I want to move it more in the blue family and it right. stays in the same value. Spot, yeah. Okay, okay. Maybe we'll pick a tool. Let's do pick our brush. Folks. Dun, dun, I, I'm, dun, dun. I'm a little worried. I think it might just. Yay, okay, good. <laughs> so you can see I'm going to undo it. What it's doing is it's gonna change the color. Let's make our color change a little more drastic so you can see it. It's going to change the overall color to a more blue hue, like what I selected, but it's still gonna maintain some of those inner- inner The uh, texture of that textures. brush, yeah. the lines that you made, all of the like right. painting of it essentially, but yeah. just changing the, the color. Texture. Yeah, it changes the color and that's the beauty. And there's all kinds of ways to use these transparency locks. But I think the value in this transparency lock tool, and again, you just go ahead and you'll, you'll click on your layer and you scroll down to unlock or lock your transparency. What that allows you to do is to not worry about colors too much and just realize that you can just go ahead and maybe focus more on texture and then later on, if you want to shift that color more towards blue or yellow or whatever, you can have that option. That's amazing. Cause yeah, like you said, you don't have to necessarily decide right, right now your final color right. palette, Which irreversible, nice. right? Yeah. You can maybe tweak it and push it, like you said, more to blue down the line. And, nice. and it goes for all the other elements um, in the piece too, that are on separate Absolutely. layers. You could also mm -hmm. adjust that's so handy, especially I feel Fun. like when you're when you're working like with a client project and sometimes yeah. things change or, you know, they want make that blue more blue and, mm -hmm. you know, in the client's eyes, blue was another blue. Um, yeah. You can easily <laughs> you can easily correct it for them without too much stress, yeah. especially when you compare it to something like traditional materials, which we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier. If you had to change blue on a flat oh painting, God. you'd either have to actually repaint it, you'd have to scan it and like digitally yeah. manipulate it. It just is so nightmare. Uh, cumbersome. And I'm like, right. this is so, so easy. It's just like a no brainer to go ahead and use the tools use if you the have tools. them. Exactly. Help yourself down right. the road. <laughs> That's a good tip. 
That's a good trick. Yeah. Yes, that one's really handy. I've never used actually the lock transparency. I am more of a clipping mask yeah, kind of girl. Um, but that one is kind of simpler, I feel like, and less a little bit more clean. Um, sometimes a clipping mask in your file get a little bit outrageous um after yeah you get a lot more file you need to be more organized with your yeah 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 so choose your battles um files can get so out of control (laughs) you you don't label your layers and then you have folders and then oh my gosh so many ways to draw a whale shark (laughs) you'll find some little schmutz somewhere you know and you're just like what layer is that what layer is that on (laughs) no i totally get what you mean i love that in fresco you can also name your layers i'm not as um yeah. diligent as I should be but you can always open it up in Photoshop on desktop mm-hmm. and then get like do protect back organize is what I do call you know, it right? you before you send it off you just like oh yeah no this yeah. whole time I was working on it like this right. very organized <laughs> yeah because because you have to st- actually click the layer to see the name of the layer yeah is there a way and I was I've never been able to figure it out to show your layer names on that kind of like because if I go out of on that little sidebar out I of i don't think there i don't think there's a way but this um is our official way to request it <laughs> yeah exactly and and that would be nice and then what else was i thinking no that's pretty much it i just like to see the layered names i, I do see on the side there but say if i go over to this view i'm yeah kind of really you don't see it as it much mm-hmm. but that's okay once you start filling in things you start to be able to see it on the thumbnail yeah and that's where we're at right now or you know you can, we can always get uh, bigger ipads Oh yeah. <laughs> that way you can have everything open at all times. I want my I want a you. curved iPad that just fall is just like that you live inside days. of. <laughs> I'm Technology. sure we'll get there. Yeah, we we'll will. get there and then the the keyboard will just be, you know, in the Mental, air like yeah. Iron Man, you know, it's Mental just like keyboard. something you just kind of press on the side. Yes, like I can band-aid. totally see it happening already. Mental yeah. Keyboard. Just kind of click well, it in the air. Well, this is a little reminder for those watching the stream. Right now, we are with husband and wife art duo, Matt and Roxy Ortiz. We're creating this amazing whale shark piece in honor of the Adobe hashtag create waves campaign. If you're watching and you have questions, you're like, how do Matt and Roxy do X or Y or Z? You can just Bring your questions to the Bring chat it. and we'll <laughs> answer them. Whether you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on Behance, drop your questions. We'll get them answered. So don't be shy. We're here to hang out with you guys while we create this piece. We, as in them, they're creating the piece, but I'm, I'm here hanging out. <laughs> you are. It's awesome. Or yeah, participating together. About illustration or murals or any of that. Um, one thing I'll say too, what we use the iPad and um, doing kind of illustrations on the iPad um, for is for our murals. So mm-hmm. when we're designing out a piece, everything gets drawn completely on um, the iPad first. So it's not like we come to the wall and be like, oh, I wonder what we're going to paint today. You yeah. know, we have our plan that's been <laughs> completely drawn out. That would be amazing, um, but that's not how we work. Yeah, that's not how we work. Roxy's about to drop some, <laughs> some trade secrets here. Yeah. I don't know. No, I love it. But... I love it because I think a lot of artists Good. aspire to make murals. Um, you know, even something like this, in some ways, could be there could be a version of it that's for a mural. Um, oh, definitely. And, oh, yeah. and I think like uh, sometimes we see murals, and it just if you just see a mural that's like huge and amazing, it's like I don't even know how someone would approach that. Right. Um, but there are ways, like you're saying, to kind of prep it so that when you show up for the mural painting portion you're ready to go so what kind of things in the mural pro- tell me about the mural process i know you guys sure. completed a recent mural for the honolulu museum so mm-hmm. i'm like tell me a little bit more because i'm sure that there's viewers on the stream who want to know Definitely. all about mural making so when we um start a mural we have you know the idea or the concept and then we sketch it out much like we would do a client piece mm-hmm. or an illustration for ourselves and then we get all the line work completely um, finished, kind of like Matt's doing right now, actually. Yeah. Yeah. This is not unlike doing a mural piece at all. I mean, the line work zone. Um, 
Yeah. And we might even try out colors as well. Not so much textures and that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. um, we would definitely try out color combinations if it's a subject that we haven't worked with before, at least just to get um, an idea of what colors that we would need to buy. Yeah. Um, and then if it is like a client mural, then that would definitely lend us more to doing some colors in there um, as part of the sketch. But if it's for ourselves, not necessarily. Um, but once we have that idea um, completely drawn out, details and lines. Like to um, proportions, right? Yeah, to proportions, to the wall. Oh, actually, that's a really good point. So um, we would set the drawing canvas, you know, on the screen exactly the same size mm -hmm. as the wall. So everything's proportional. Um, we even, because we talk about those multiply layers, right? We even just take a picture of the wall itself yeah. and then we layer the sketch on top of it and we can send that to clients as a mock-up and say, you know, like, here's what the sketch looks like on no, the wall. That's a good, really good tip, mm -hmm. I think. And a lot of people maybe don't do that and they'll just do a mock-up. But if you can get a photo of the actual space, then it helps them envision their space with your artwork on it. Right, because you just adjust which helps sell, the Which helps sell the artwork. And I think that's a huge part of being an artist, right? Is selling <laughs> the application of your work yeah. for someone else. Right. right. So that's super, super handy. And something that, yeah, I feel like the Adobe Fresco and, and just the iPad in general can help yeah. you quickly do without having to be like necessarily like a pro at using yeah. anything. Right. Yeah. No, I think if with anything, communication is always key. So it's the easier you can communicate what your vision is or what the piece is going to look like, then the less questions that people have because they can just see it, right? Like, right. Oh, that makes sense. They're not trying to imagine, trying yeah. to figure out, like, I think this is what they're saying they're going to do. You know, they can literally. Mm -hmm. And ultimately less revisions yes. on both for everyone, right? For you right. and for the client, right? There's less back and forth. Um, if you can just be like, here's exactly what I'm planning on doing and why it works for what you want and all of that. So that is amazing. And usually do you get your, um, like at what stage do you get mural approvals? Like the concept, is there a stage before it's done? Like what, or do you have um, the concept fully finished before it's ready to be created onto the wall? The concept's fully finished. Yep. Yeah, so there's no questions of what the and the color and everything look like. Um, the color can be sometimes. It just kind of depends on what the job is. Mm -hmm. I think because um, our work is usually very highly colorful. People, yeah. even if it's a black and white sketch, people mm -hmm. just know like this isn't going to be a black and white mural. Right. <laughs> it's going to be very colorful. If it's a treehouse, you know, the trees are going to be green and. The Got it. Okay. okay, okay. Whatever. Yeah. It'll yeah. have a lot of color. Um, but you did mention the Honolulu Museum of Art. And for that, we actually have two styles. So mm -hmm. um, Wooden Wave is known for our kind of fantastical tree houses where there's skate ramps and solar panels on the roof and <laughs> um, greenhouses and you know, tanks. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you're going to live in a tree house, you, there's all the things that you're going to need, right? For your energy, you're going to grow your food, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then we also have another style that we get to work in, which we love. And that one's a bit more geometric and abstract. And that was kind of more inspired by us growing up and being from Hawaii. And so it incorporates Hawaiian, um, and when I mean Hawaiian, like Hawaiian ethnic, um, yeah, Native Hawaiian, Native uh, Hawaiian patterns, iconography, mm -hmm. and beautiful. I'm, yeah, I'm Hawaiian, so I kind of identify to it. I grew up. We both grew up here in Hawaii. Yeah. And so it's a part of the culture that we we really um, identify with, and it has an artistic style a lot of times. And yeah, you no, know, you'll know the patterns and stuff like that. The patterns, a lot of times, most people will see them mm -hmm. <clears throat> in traditional tattoos. Yeah. Um, yes. And it's a, kind of like a lot of, um, you know, cultures where those patterns will show up in the cultural art. So here it's tattoo or it might be in the fashion or the fabrics mm -hmm. that were created. But a lot um, of those patterns also have specific meanings. Mm -hmm. So when we say iconography, like if you look at our abstract pieces, they'll have um, different types of patterns that represent like the oneness of community, knowledge, um, family, family. So a lot of symbolism. Yeah, right? symbolism. <laughs> yeah. So that's a kind of a fun way to work, where it's a, like a little more metaphoric in times, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll we'll switch it up. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. kind of so nice. like a little less illustrative, it is, right? Yeah. Like it is. more. That's painterly. amazing. That's that's so cool that you can work in different styles and. 
for we have a really good question here from Cody. Um, when you do murals, whether in this style or in the more intricate illustrative style, um, do you use a projector to get the mural yes. onto the surface? Yeah, yes. definitely. Good question. Yeah, Cody. so that's what um, that's why we'll have everything drawn out exactly as we want for the line work. So for a more abstract style, because it's not line based, mm -hmm. that can be a lot more general in what we've created on the iPad, as long Got as it. the general shapes and patterns that we're looking to include are there. So mm -hmm. we have kind of that framework. Um, but when it comes to our tree houses, because they're basically like architectural draftsman drawings, you know, yeah. if it's off, mm -hmm. the architecture looks off and like the house looks a little it looks wonky, wonky, or right. something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so those have to be really dialed in. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, but either way, we'll project that onto the wall. Um, if anyone hasn't projected before, really, you're just uh, plugging the iPad or even our phone sometimes into mm -hmm. the projector, and then it just puts the image onto the wall. It takes some time to kind of scale it to the wall. We have, we've had many adventures and misadventures of, of having Scaling. to project on different sized walls. Um, I think our biggest wall is maybe like, 40 feet high by 60 feet long or something wow and so there's just there's all kinds of challenges yeah because like, then you have to like get the projector road. further back and we've had rain and then oh make sure the perspective is right yeah. oh, man. oh wow <laughs> if the wall is taller than it is wide that's a problem yeah. <laughs> and, right. um you know we've had to be projecting from across the road um, there's just all kinds of <laughs> Does it ever happen that it's like too weather. light out that you can't see the projection? Yeah. Yeah. So you always have to wait until it gets dark enough. And depending on where you're at, that can be kind of sketchy <laughs> or like the weather is just or like- Or just not, not great to like the work working process, right? Cause you're like, oh, I want to start in the morning, but you have to start at, the, in, at night or whatever. Yeah. There then, are ways to do it where you could, um, you could, you could use your phone and take a picture of the wall and then mock up your artwork on your phone and then use like the, the bricks or if you have some marking patterns Got on the it. wall. So you could work in the day, but yeah. generally we just project. Yeah. We wait till dark. So yeah. there's a flow to the timing. When we do our project schedule, we'll you pull one all night or sure. always. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Because I think people have some kind of um, maybe um, thought that doing projecting is fast, but it's actually not. <laughs> So yeah, yes no, it's one yeah. of those I don't think things. any part of mural making is fast <laughs> in my eyes. It seems very labor intensive, yes. especially, com <laughs> especially compared to doing something like a digital illustration piece like you're doing right now. And then this mm -hmm. gets, let's say this were to get printed off as a poster. Right. That is a lot simpler than having to create the whole piece and then also figure out how you're going to yeah. literally physically <laughs> paint it onto another surface. Yeah. <laughs> And even so when you're projecting, people ask, you know, have a question of like, how, what do you use when you're drawing it onto the wall? So <clears throat> usually it's pencil. So we're just using like a heavy duty mm. kind of construction pencil. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Some people use chalk. We've used chalk in the past, um, but we do prefer pencil. Um, it just depends on the wall surface. Um, That's another thing that you have to think about is oh, the yeah. wall and, and what color is the wall to begin with, you know? Right. <laughs> well, sometimes it's um, brick. So the wall that we did in Worcester, Massachusetts, it was brick that had really deep, um, what do you call it? Grout lines? Grout. Yeah, like, it was the grout lines. Yeah. Which, frequent. you know, with a paintbrush, Indeed. having to have all these grout lines to paint over is a nightmare. And it was such a huge wall. Um, so that was the first time we ever spray painted on, mm -hmm. it was like on this huge 40 foot high wall. We've never spray painted before. And then we had spray painted. I feel like it's <laughs> ironic too, that on that Wooster Woost <laughs> wall and that's in Massachusetts. And it was like the hottest wall I think we've done. And we've painted like in very Vegas tropical... and Hawaii, and like, you know, it was a hot East coast. There. You wouldn't have thought was going to yeah, be the hottest we were... wall. Wow. So then you have the heat and the reflection of the, the sun just reflecting back at you. Such a... Um, so wall. you get sunburned from the back and from the front. We got so oh, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Um, yeah. I love it when but, that uh, happens. Double sunburn. <laughs> but going back oh. to the pencil drawing on oh, the wall. Sorry. So, um, so you use a pencil to project, but for us, like we usually give ourselves about five hours to draw mm -hmm. one of our tree houses onto the wall. So even though you have 
you know, the projection on there and you're just tracing, right. you know, depending on the kind of illustration that you're doing, it could take hours. <laughs> wow. Yeah. For those yeah. treehouse ones that have so much detail, I could totally see that taking as long as it needs to take essentially, because you can't really right. like guess a little part of it. Like I'll right. figure this part <laughs> out later. That doesn't quite work with those kinds of drawings. Like maybe for the more um, geometric ones, you can kind of follow the math a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah those can with, go quite a bit faster. Definitely. Wow, so fascinating. Yeah. And I feel like does that does that then influence um, your timelines with your clients? Like, what? Mm -hmm. How do you work with clients to be realistic with them as to what you can pull off on a right. mural project? Yeah, I, think I feel like always clients thinking. always have really big expectations, right? Right, mm -hmm. and I think that's always with any relationship is managing expectations, mm -hmm. right? I think we mentioned that yesterday, That's right? Yeah. Manage expectations. Manage. Um, yeah, and I think um, some, you know, clients will always want things maybe as fast as they can get them, but that doesn't mean they're open to whatever timeline you provide. They just don't know. Like a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know how long a mural takes and some people work faster, you know, depending on the, the artist's style, mm -hmm. um, you know, some murals can be really fast where some muralists take a really long time to get stuff done. Um, so it's just knowing your own work and communicating what you can do yeah. um, so that you're not stressed out and that you're um, you're doing what you say you're going to do, right? For the client. Right. If you right. say Everyone's it's going to take a week, it, they, you know, then they're like, okay, great. It takes a week. If you told them it takes two weeks, as long as it takes two weeks and not longer than two weeks, you know, then they have their expectations met, right? Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of knowing your own work, like what you're able to do. And so I think that's one of the things with even projecting, if someone wants to try a mural and they haven't projected before, you know, definitely um, trying to do even something in your own house first or for a friend yeah. first, just to see what the steps are. So it's not, you know, the first time that you do yeah. one, as you said, like you could do one for a client, you're like, sure. Um, you know, and then you're having to troubleshoot everything on the spot, you know, as much as you yes. can pick something out in your own space first. Um, even just setting up the projector to project on the wall, backing it up, seeing, you know, how far you're gonna have to back up into mm -hmm. your yard before it gets to that 20 yeah. foot width that you actually need. You it takes, know? A, it right. takes a, a right, lot right. of distance to get the whole wall sometimes. Right, so. I think, it, and it, we've done this for a long time and it still catches us off guard. Mm -hmm where we're like, oh yeah, that should be enough space. And then no, it's not. No. <laughs> so we've got to, you know, project in two parts, you that know, happened right. Recently, in fact. Right. So then sometimes <laughs> we have to split up, you know, the composition yeah. into two um, and then project half and then project another, project half. another half. And just the setup takes hours. It takes hours. Right, um, right, right. Yeah. So. Speaking of like how long the setup takes, how long does, let's say, finishing a mural take for your more illustrative style? Um, mm -hmm. And then for your geometric style, like what is the time frames usually for those kinds of murals? Gotcha. Um, I think we've trained ourselves to have murals take about a week. And that's because we yeah. um, are used to doing mural festivals, which are about a week. <laughs> and is so, that like with the concept included or is that just the execution oh. of the mural? No, just the execution. Definitely Got it. Just okay. Execution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, Good yeah. So yeah right because i would say just drawing something out for us for the tree houses would take a week right so just getting the composition drawn out and getting approvals and all just that making stuff. all those decisions before mm -hmm. you even get to the part where you're paint transferring it to your location essentially. right and i think because a lot of the projects are for um you know either a mural festival that's months away or it's a a development project where mm -hmm. like the building's not even up yet <laughs> or Got you know it. that store isn't even open yet like they're in the plans for doing the renovations of the building or something like that or it's a new store popping up and the interior design you know like set aside a wall that's going to be like their mural wall you know mm -hmm. um it's usually months in advance that we have for a mural um so cool. we've got that time to you know bounce back ideas and do some sketches and that kind of thing yeah that's amazing now for um, projects like the one that that you're working on right now for the whale sharks, where mm -hmm. it's, let, let's say, let's pretend that this um, a whale shark piece is going to be a poster, just mm -hmm. inspired by the previous poster that you did. Um, <laughs> how long would that, something like that, take like a poster for a client? Just to get a oh. little bit of an understanding of the difference in timeframes that we're talking about. Yeah. Right. 
Um, usually, I'd say almost for any project, you'd want at least a month in advance at least <laughs> yeah the more the better i mean yeah. we're trying to push ideal always, yeah 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 make sure people don't take on projects where they're like so stressed out that their work can't be can't speak for itself you know because that's not good for anyone really yeah client doesn't get what they want you don't put out work that you're proud of so try and get more <laughs> <laughs> yeah we for always sure. try to um give ourselves cushion like even if our work um is in that more geometric style, it still ends up being really complex mm. in relation to color. color. So it still ends yeah. up having, you know, 30 colors or something that right, we're having right, to right. paint. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's detailed in a non-line work type of way. So it ends up taking us almost just as long. Um, we'll just dive into more pattern and, and that. Right, you're just playing up different <laughs> different aspects of it, right? So like it, right. maybe it's not drafting the sketch that takes you the longest. Right. Like you said, it's it's the color. And so I think sometimes people fail, people as in art directors or people just commissioning uh, work fail to realize that even something simple can take a long time oh, yeah. just because Definitely. there's very specific decisions, right? They have to be like perfect decisions um, to make it look so simple. Right. Um, and and so I just like to ask like what timelines people are working with, because, um, you know, in this session, we're doing everything in essentially four hours, mm -hmm. um, right. which is unheard of typically. Right. <laughs> right? You would never do something for a client in four hours. And that's that, you know, you yeah. need right. time to discuss the idea, to like mull it over, to do the research, all of the phases they take quite a long time just for anyone watching who's an artist and they're like why can't I draw yeah. 16 whale sharks super fast um you may not be able to but you don't need to be able right to. Don't if feel... anybody answers that question yeah. <laughs> don't feel the pressure yeah. Yeah, don't, feel the pressure. <laughs> don't ask yourself that <laughs> I'm yeah. curious I want to hear from the from the other artists too on, on how they're how they're approaching things yeah, right. timeline. yes let us know in the chat Let's what your know. timelines are looking like how long it takes you to finish a piece mm -hmm. for me i usually prefer having a month with a client just so i nice. have kind of like a week of sketching a week mm -hmm. of color mm -hmm. a week of revisions and then a little yeah. more just in case something happens <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> on both oh, yeah. ends right on both so my end because you're also i'm assuming you guys have been working in this industry for a long time um, working on multiple things at once. Exactly. So you don't just need the month and you're only working on that one piece all month. Mm -hmm. That's not usually the case. You have multiple murals going on. So you need the month to be able to bounce back from everything and not like completely <laughs> um, drain yourself. Oh, yeah. Right. No, from definitely. From project to project. Take care I think of yourself. That's, I think that is the, um, the life of the freelancer, mm -hmm. right? Is that you have all these kinds of things going on, especially because we work in different modes. Um, it's nice because we get a break from screens to then, you know, work outside mm -hmm. or working inside on a painting commission, something like that. But then it's also very jarring because it's like, okay, now we're done with this illustration. Okay, next we need to go to Home Depot to pick up a ton of paint to then drop off at the job site because mm -hmm. that mural is starting in a few days, you yeah. know? And so right. Just, yeah, like... it's a lot of balancing, <laughs> which is really cool that you guys have each other. I know we talked yeah. um, about that a lot yesterday, but like that must help to balance out the workloads. Like, cause mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but it's it like you just said, it's hard to switch from one mode to the yeah. other. Yeah. So it must be nice if one person can stay in one mode and the other person can do the other mode, right? You're yeah. like splitting yourself up um that has to be handy i'm assuming <laughs> it is handy nice. and then it's just literally having two people to do the right. to-do list too right yeah. you know um it's like, yeah, okay, i'll pick exactly. up the paint. brushes i'll get the brushes yeah Here's the drop cloths all right <laughs> yes yes you guys are like each other's backup i love that yeah. right? um so <laughs> So getting a little back to this mm -hmm. piece that we're working on. So yeah. um, what perspective would you say this piece is in? I'm a little bad at defining it. So that's why I wanted to ask oh, you. Oh, sure. Hmm, perspective, I think it is a top-down perspective. Um, but it uh, almost looks like we're swimming with them. I want to, yeah, I want to feel like I'm in the water with them. Immersive. Kind of immersive. immersive. Yeah, it's not quite drone shot. It's more like diving through the depths. Right Got about it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, because I know that you play a lot with perspective in some of your other pieces mm -hmm. and you're using, I think, I'm like, I have to double check, but it's pr it's two point perspective for a lot of these tree houses, right? Yeah, a lot of two point perspective. Yep, we've got how our... do you How do you like keep that going when you're creating mm -hmm. these pieces and keep the perspective correct? Because I feel like that's really hard. That's just really hard to like 
just wing and even to learn. So I'm just curious if you have any tips for people who want All to right. work in two point perspective. You're the perspective guy. Oh man, you I know, don't like perspective. There might actually, and, and <laughs> maybe don't. someone can uh, in, the, in the actual <laughs> feed tell me, but there's there's ways that you can either set up your canvas size so that you actually define where those points of vanishing points are. Um, and then you just know that all lines that are, um, if a house is one side of the house, all those lines are gonna move towards that left perspective point or vanishing point. And then all the lines on the right side of that house will move to the right perspective line. And it's yes, always yes, yes, yes. on a horizon line. And do you um, use something to keep yourself on that or mentally really. you just get it these days? I kind of, and if you were to like really dive into some of our pieces, maybe the perspective isn't perfect, but I have but it's been believable. doing perspective so much yeah, that I know that each line as it gets higher up, the, the angle should be more, more drastic. Yeah. And that two lines next to each other if they're running parallel, they should look like they're narrowing as they go into the distance, as opposed to if those lines start separating and they're supposed to be parallel and they're separating in the distance, then you're starting to deal with like wonky, wonky. perspective. <laughs> which wow, I like, can't, I literally for. cannot <laughs> believe that you are just like vibing with the perspective. Yeah. Essentially, you're just like, um, I can feel that it goes like this. And so I just keep it like that. Yeah, there are, I was wondering if you were going to bring this up, but there are tools in Adobe Fresco for perspective. So I was just like, maybe I'll mention it. Maybe he those. won't. <laughs> um, but Cody in the chat is reminding me yeah. about them. I believe, you, I believe they're in the <laughs> bottom right. You see this little, um, okay, let's see. Oh, the bottom yes. right. You see that ruler? The ruler. Okay. So this, I think sure that can... they're in here somewhere. Um, Cody, Cody might have to drop a link, but, um, I'm pretty sure that beyond, or maybe that's just the drawing aid. Sorry. I misled drawing you guys. The drawing one? aids that kind of helps. help. Ooh. It still helps you for, um, if you were yep. kind of creating your own lines, but yeah. I believe that there's also, let me check it out. Yeah. So this oh. drawing tool, I believe you just, you can set it up and then you can draw on it. Like use yes. it a, and that's really a cool function. Um, it is really fine. handy. A lot of people use this for drawing um, the lines for like type typography yeah. and stuff like that, I, right? You could draw your it. own lines, yeah, but yeah. you can set up grids in Fresco. Oh my gosh. I, uh, I don't know how to, how to set them we'll up create. yet. I'm sure maybe Cody can find us a link on the perspective tools. They are hidden in here somewhere. You guys. I know Cody, they are. Save us. <laughs> save us, save us. Um, well, I thought they were in there. But for the it might be one. this little grid. Can, can, you try click, can you try <laughs> clicking that grid under the layer properties? Okay, let me let me just uh, unlock. Oh no, you're okay. you're in the middle of something. Okay, Sorry. so <laughs> let's see. What are we what are we gonna do? There's that okay. like grid, there's like layers, and then there's the properties right. button, and then there's you see that little grid? No, on the all the way on the right. Oh, Oh, this guy. Maybe Snapping. it's there. Oh, create perspective grid. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm, that's I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in there. May it has to be somewhere around there, right? I feel like I think that's it. That's the name it, of it. <laughs> all right. So in this so case we won't go, need guy. it because, yeah, in this because case they're don't. organic shapes. We just yeah. basically are foreshortening things like volume. Um, and that we don't need to have the two point perspective. But if we were doing a house. A tree house for sure. I'm definitely going <laughs> to explore that. It's funny how cool. we don't even use that, but we, sh we should. Yeah, we should. Sometimes we should you just get so lost in like the Some details of things that you don't. Well, sometimes you, you have your own process and you're yeah. like, I mean, it's clearly working out great for you. Why would you need to throw in another thing? But um, for those yeah. who have seen those pieces of yours and are curious how they can pull it off. You know, you could start there and for you guys, you can maybe use those down the line if you're trying to, maybe it'll speed things up for you or, or maybe it won't, I'm you sure never know. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do a, tools are always good to have. Yeah, they are. And speaking of tools, I'm going to go ahead and do a, I, this is, this will be kind of fun because I have all the sharks selected. I'm going to go ahead and well, actually the negative space selected. Ooh, look, I forgot one. I forgot on the one. background. Yeah. I tapped on the background. I forgot this inside part of the shark. There we go. And there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to invert selection. Okay. And I am on my color layer. This should be kind of fun because you'll see it a lot more um, impactfully. 
Okay. Word. And More dramatically. Gonna, dramatically. I'm going to move my Cezanne brush. All the way large. up. Size yeah, 207. <laughs> wait, 2, 23. Oh my gosh. Okay, huge brush. And Whoa. like the fresco is like, oh my gosh, I'm chugging, but it's working. It's working. You're just like taking one big brush to kind of color them all at once. Yeah. I wish we could paint our murals that fast. Oh I was about to say <laughs> the same thing. Imagine if you could do this IRL. Um, okay. This looks okay. amazing. This is so cool. You're getting like a really cool texture and speeding yeah. things up a ton. Right. You can start to see. Okay. So maybe that feels pretty decent for now. Um, I noticed that I had an area or two where I didn't... Um, over here i didn't select those areas but i can just go ahead and um, i can either erase them manually with the eraser tool which okay. might actually be fast enough for my purposes or mm -hmm. i could go back and select them um, on that line layer and got it okay subtract it that way but i'm just gonna go ahead and do that get that background cleaned up yeah. a little bit oh let's turn nice. on let's turn on our cloud layer so if i go to this turn on a cloud layer Whoa, okay, that's dang. Cool. Okay, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Get moody in there. Well, why Can don't you we go back to our um property? Yeah. You know how right now you have the grid selected. Can you select the one right above it? Oh, that one. That way we can see the layer yes. properties of each Thank layer you. as we're working. Okay. Right. So neat. So that's that's actually on normal. This one's on normal. And if we moved it around, we would see it do different things. So if I move this up top and it's on normal, it's just gonna blot out the colors of um, my Line sharks work. because they're below. Right. But what if I go from normal and then let's just experiment and turn it back to multiply. It pretty mm. much goes back to how it was. However, there's also color burn, linear burn. I mean, you can just mess around with them and you'll start to see all sorts of different ah, effects. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh, I kind of like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. Do you often um, play with these layer properties yeah. in your pieces? depending on the piece but i feel like it's always um it always because I, I don't quite understand always how they're going to um interact Results, yeah so yeah. it's it's kind of a toss-up but on this one i kind of like how that's working however i did lose a little bit of my but maybe i'll just run with that it's almost cooler that way yeah, you can you can always change it down the line. Also, yeah. I think it's really cool to see like happy accidents, right? Because you're, I mean, you're looking for the accidents, but it's cool uh, to create effects you didn't even know that were you know possibilities. I'm right? I think I'm gonna try one more one more option is I'm gonna move that um, shark layer to normal. Okay. And then I want to see um, this back at normal as well. And then okay. So if I wanted to still see the dark blue of the sky in the background, I might, and not interact, have the sky interact with the whale sharks themselves, I might just have them both on normal. And just for the purpose of building the piece right now, maybe we'll leave it at that. I think we should Got do some it. dots though, yeah. I think some pattern would be nice. Patterning? Yeah. Pattern, yeah, the whale shark yeah. pattern we were saying is quintessential to this yes. whole thing, so would be right. cool to see how you're going to approach that because it is really intricate and like you said mm -hmm. uh is going to affect the anatomy right like mm -hmm. yeah. you can't just put in dots kind of crazy because then you might mess up with the anatomy that you work so hard for I know. <laughs> okay so that, i think i'm going to move this sketch layer up top and i'm using my sketch layer as a guide again and it it actually lends a lot to the piece I kind of like that. Yeah, specific. it's a guide, not just for mm -hmm. the outlines, though. It's right. for that, uh, the curvature of the anatomy. You, you were speaking yeah. to that yesterday. So I just want to remind those who are just tuning right. in today that the sketch has a lot of that dimension right. that um, he still is deciding in terms of how he's going to finish mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, and sometimes we'll even leave um, like certain artists that we're really a fan of. Like uh, we mentioned Jay Ryan, he'll do screen prints where he'll leave the, the sketch, sketch in there. And there's a certain quality to that if you're going for that. Um, like I said, we're really partial to hand-drawn things. But for this, it's really going to show me the volume of the dots. And let's re real check, real quick, check our, our reference images. Yes. You can see how they've got dots between lines, mostly. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a beautiful one. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can transfer that. And a lot of dots like up at the head and a lot yes, of lines the on the Yes, the dots at the head just kind of are like... <laughs> yes, it's so cool. And that's kind of the cool thing about that... Um, 
software that uh, we were talking about that identifies whale sharks, just like how it identifies stars by looking at the, the patterns. I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. Um, okay. We'll call this we'll call this dot layer dots. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's another perk of working with your keyboard, right? You can yeah. quickly just, just type, it uh, in. type out the layer names because sometimes yeah. just on the with the iPad, it can be kind of tricky to pull up the keyboard. Right. More cumbersome. And I wonder if there's a dot brush. If we go back to our brushes. Dun dun. I Sar bet there is. Somewhere. Sarah. Sarah's got some dots. Well, Sarah yeah. is the artist that did the dots. Oh, look at oh, this. Oh, man. So, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and change that to... Getting real hype here. There's a lot oh, happening oh. right now, you guys. <laughs> Should we add a little yellow to that? Maybe. Uh, maybe. Because, no. I mean, I like real sharks... Okay, Ooh. so let's change the. So that's a little. A little too close. Dense. dense. What if yeah. we go and we change our brush, brush settings? Scattered a little bit more. Stamp count. Was that what we did? No. Scatter? Ooh, scatter. Yes, you might Definitely. want to scatter. It gets a little crazy, though, a little unpredictable. <laughs> it's more like bunches of dots. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That brings us back to art history when you study Syrah. Yeah. What is that painting? The jetty or point, point all those people who are. Oh, the yeah, one at the, the park with the monkey. They're at the at park. The <laughs> yeah. It's like everyone's picnicking on that shore. Yeah. 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 Love that That's one. cool. You can find brushes that are kind of like inspired directly from it. We knew what it was without even checking wow. it out. That's right? cool. Syrah. I don't know if this is. It like works maybe for only like the really tight areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know what we'll do is we'll just use it as a texture. So let's select a variant of this green and maybe tone it up a bit or, or um, brighten it a bit. Brighten it, okay. And then, okay, that's too much. <laughs> but we can go back to that color. And so I, I use the ink dropper tool quite a lot. As you can see, I'm not even really going into, oh, it's still coming out. I'm not really even going into um, the- The color palette made, at the bottom, palette. yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's more subtle. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say you could play with the um, the blend mm -hmm. modes or mm -hmm. transparency too if you wanted to give yeah. that texture effect. And again, if yeah. I wanted to do it in an alpha channel lock, I could go to the, I could go to this uh, whale shark layer. And again, you click that lock transparency button. See that right there, unlock and lock. So if you lock okay. the transparency button, you see that little checkerboard and the lock signal. And then if I do any of these patterns, it'll stay within um the shark that boundary which that's maybe cool. be kind of fun i actually kind of like that texture it, it might help uh with creating like the shadows of the dimension of the anatomy right maybe. That hump yeah. or something like that even yeah. if it's maybe. not um mm -hmm. maybe right. then you don't have to do too many as many lines yeah and there oh, are yeah. there are fish you know mm -hmm. there's sharks that have they have scales so we want to kind of build Sort of oh yes, this is a whale shark pop whale quiz shark. question I have oh, yeah. for you. Oh, okay. Uh oh. Okay, for everyone <laughs> in the chat. For it's for everyone in the chat. Okay. Um, are whale sharks whales or sharks? <laughs> dun, 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 if you know, you can drop the emoji in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead and try and drop an emoji. I don't know if I think that there's an emoji for both. Yes. So, so drop a whale emoji if you think a whale shark is a whale, and drop a shark <laughs> emoji if you think a whale shark is a shark. Um, do, what What do you guys dun, think? I'm dun, sure you know. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. <laughs> we don't want to give it away. Should I give it away? Yeah, give it away. Okay, give it away. I'll give it away. It is definitely a shark. It it's a shark. shark. Yes, shark. I just dropped in the the shark emoji for everyone in the chat. Um, I love that. I feel like. They're so gentle that you could think that they're whales. whales. Yeah. They're so giant. I yeah. think um, they're, they're huge. They're given that name because of the slowness of the way they move and and the, the way that they and feed. And how big they are. <laughs> how big they are, but they feed on small little krill and plankton, much the way uh, a whale would. They're filtered. Yes. Feeders. Yep. And uh, I don't know. They're just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Did you also know one. the? Do you know uh, what do you think the size is of the largest confirmed whale shark? Eight, Ooh, eight, 18 meters. Yes, <laughs> that's because we both done our research. Eighteen meters, but do you, how much is that in feet? 
I don't know. <laughs> That's well, the real question. Well, I know. I know. It's, it's feet, 61 so. feet of 61. right about. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Just for everyone watching and trying to understand a little bit more on like the perspective, right? Like mm -hmm. how big are these creatures? The biggest one is 61 feet. I can't even oh, put gosh. that in perspective. That how many size. stories is that? Like, <laughs> that's really, really tall. It's at um, least six stories. Yeah. It's like, that's huge. So I don't know, just a little fun facts for you guys um, in the chat, because we're talking about whale sharks in honor of the hashtag create waves campaign between Yay. Adobe and the ocean agency. Um, we have to help out the whale sharks because they're yes. endangered. Yes. Um, are they endangered or? Yeah, I think that they are, right? Yes. They need they're to be endangered. conserved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're um they're also very much a uh, target for uh, uh, finning, which is the yes. practice of of catching these sharks just for their fins, which is um it's a really depressing. A sad, yeah, depressing <laughs> thing that we do as humans, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And um I found out as well that they uh, they are migratory, but mm -hmm. they also are always at this island called Mafia Island in Tanzania. That's where they oh. like chill at, and you can like see them there a lot. So yeah, nice. um, it's a big part of their tourism. And is it Ta it's Tanzania? I am questioning the way I'm pronouncing everything. Tanzania. Everyone, I there think you go. Tanzania, the uh, Africa, right? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> they're, they're, maybe I couldn't um, say. There's a but. lot in that sort of Madagascar, um, Indian Ocean, but I know you'd mentioned yesterday that you'd snorkeled in Cozumel or Cozumel. Yeah. Um, and I believe they also Mexico. have, yeah, in Mexico and, and in Cozumel, didn't uh, Pangea see the, mm -hmm. yeah, so they're, they're kind of all over. They're and, all over except the Mediterranean Sea. Oh, Okay. They're not the there. <laughs> they're, not, they're not vibing with the Mediterranean Sea. Um, but yeah, so that's a cool, mm. fun fact. Um, just a little uh, to, a little education on the whale sharks since we're oh. trying to raise awareness here through this piece. I thought I would throw out some facts. Clearly, you guys had also read up on these whale shark facts, but that's <laughs> just for, for anyone tuning in. And as a little reminder for everyone who's tuning in here today, right now you're watching Matt and Roxy of Wooden Wave Art create this piece in Adobe Fresco Ooh. in honor of the hashtag Create Waves campaign. We're talking all things about whale sharks, about art, about process, about Adobe Fresco. And if you have questions for them, bring it to the chat and we bring can it talk it chat. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And a little reminder, if you're tuning in from YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our Adobe live channel so you don't miss the next stream. For all of our YouTube viewers, I want to give you a little reminder. Okay, Matt, Good. what's going right. on here? What are you all thinking? Right. What's next? next Tell us about got, what's in your art mind. <laughs> I, I, the art mind is spinning back to the dots because we've just kind of laid down a lot more of that texture with that um, Syrah brush. Yes. And um, back to the dots. So let's pick another brush. I but, think it's time to bring in some contrast. Okay. Yeah. So like a white or a yellow. Yeah. Think. And then also a the really, light. really pale white. yellow. Pale, <laughs> there you go. Pale yellow. White there. meets yellow. White. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let's use what brush to use though. Maybe we'll just kind of keep it simple so that I can make a dot. Um, go, go brush. It's just like the name. Let's yeah. see what you get. It's like, go back to your favorites. Okay, you let's go back to for a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's a go back to, <laughs> I think the Blake pen did a good, um, good clean yellow, a clean line. And then. Because some light. brushes, um, for listeners, some brushes, if they're square, you might have a harder time creating that circle. That yes. one worked out nicely. Yeah. I think I had to wiggle a little bit, but that's okay. Ooh, okay. That is stark. Um, it's it pops. It pops. It's, uh, it's popping. What do you think? It's popping. What if I? <laughs> you could do one like that, and then if you don't like it, you can use yeah. the alpha lock. Was it called? No, the lock transparency. Yeah, I could switch it up if you wanted. Or I could even adjust the layer itself um, in terms of its transparency. Right. Yeah. There you Lots go. of different ways to explore. Okay, let's let's try this. Let's do a, a just a whole dot matrix here. Okay. And then. One thing that's cool about these whale sharks, that I think is unreal and beautiful, is that they do have symmetry. So you see how that head has, oh. so what if we do one side like this, 
Mm-hmm. That is a Listen. really like good Listen. detail that you caught. Yeah. <laughs> then each one is like a thumbprint. You know, each each shark has a unique patterning. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our selection tools. Use a ellipse, and we'll select those dots. So I'm in the dots layer. And then I'm using my keyboard. I'm just going to do control C, control V. And I've now pasted that exact same thing. But if we go to our, we'll move it over and then we'll, we'll rotate it. So you see how up in the yes, top right up corner, on the top I, right. I uh, mirrored it. Did I do the right mirror? Cause there's a top bottom or there's, I think, I think that you did. I think it's just, um, there it is. No, turned. yeah, you flipped it again. Right. I think. I'm confused. <laughs> We're gonna have to do it again. No, I'm kidding. I think we do. It's okay. Let's just go. And... But either way, that's just a good way to replicate dots, so you're not having fail. to draw every single one. You it's know? not a fail. It was an experiment, and yeah, we weren't yes. paying close enough attention to the dots to, right, to see them. You're working on a very it. hard thing. If it was like a letter, you'd be able to see if it flipped. Yeah. But like, it's dots. Okay, okay so, so it there's... should be the side to side one, right? Mm-hmm. Boom. Okay, done. I think you did it right the first time. We were just doubting ourselves. Yeah, I think then, you did it. And maybe it needs to rotate down or up. It makes sense because before you had it like this, so when it flips, it's yeah, turned. It so you have to turn it again. Well, that's the concept. It's disappearing behind the line work. So that's why you're questioning it is because some of the dots are disappearing when you move it. Does it oh, look- yeah. I see what you're saying. You know what? When I look at the margin on the edge here, it doesn't, I don't, I'm not able to like, think, oh, there. No. It's flipped. You see that little dot there is up there. Okay, why don't we try it now like that? Oh my gosh, let's see. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Something's yeah, either happening. Works. Either way, we've got the dots. Yeah. Something's um, happening, we have dots. <laughs> yeah. have I think dots. that's one thing maybe we didn't mention um, today that we talked a lot about yesterday was this idea that um, each whale shark has its unique pattern of, of we keep saying dots a lot. I know I was trying to say spots. That's Another it. word for dots. Spots. spots yeah. Um, has a, their own unique uh, pattern of spots, and so that's how biologists can track individuals in, um, you know, their migrations and their mm-hmm. habitat over the course of their lives. And um, it's just a really cool thing that we're able to see. You know, like a lot of animals. You know, they've got fur or something, and they might have a tracker on them, but it's hard to tell each individual from each other. From a distance but that's what's right. so amazing about these creatures is that biologists can take pictures from you know a drone flying above and then match that to photos that they have mm-hmm. and then using an algorithm that was developed to be able to identify star patterns they're able to identify these individual whale sharks yeah i cool. love that i think it's such a cool application of technology and just like just to help out the whale shark populations and learn more about them um, I read a fact that only le- that less than 10% of whale sharks born survive to adulthood. So that is crazy. And it goes to, sh- I feel like the reason I bring that up is because that would make sense then why tracking them is so important, right? Because right. if you're able to track one all the way up until adulthood or notice a new baby coming up and like you want to make sure you're seeing what happens and how it grows up that you're that's essential to be able to recognize yeah. recognize them definitely wow that's a that's a sobering fact <laughs> i know but wait but on a positive note those that do survive may live to be 150 years old whoa wow. i didn't know there that so that's, awesome. that's the other half of that starts. fact there for you guys yes Whew, phew. yeah so the ones that do uh-huh. live, live a really long happy life but yeah. very um fulfilled life <laughs> That's good to know. Thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> Thank yes. you for the upside. <laughs> of course. I wonder okay. if you, I mean, that's the things that we don't know because they've never, you know, seen them give birth or that kind of thing is like how, how many babies can one have over that hundred I know. Year life, you know, <laughs> that is, that's a good question. We'll have to um, get some marine biologists in the chat, dropping some knowledge <laughs> yeah, for us. If um, there are any. <laughs> yes, please, exactly. Please, exactly. Please Let us, us know what here. you know. Um, <laughs> okay. So you, what brush are you using to create these stripes? Um, yeah. Right curious. now? Yeah. Is right now I'm brush? still in that Blake brush and I'm not necessarily Andy. sold on it. Um, because... I kind of like it. Okay. Yeah. 
I think you just need to keep going. Just keep going. Where, where it All goes, right. You know. Trust the process. Trust, Trust the, the process. process. Yeah. And now you're tell. following those lines that you created in yeah. your sketch layer. Right. Um, so that's where those are coming in. I think that's super important because it really is um, providing a lot of that depth that otherwise right. you would just have a flat shape. You might want to up the smoothness to it. What are you on right now? <laughs> Just because it's Ooh, look it, at that though. Doesn't that look um uh, what's the word when it's glowing the Glow. bioluminescent? Bioluminescence, yeah. yeah. I can do that. Let's do some. I don't know. Smoothing. I'm just wondering where you were on this one. This is how we work together. It's like <laughs> no, you're like, we wanted that um, wobbly. That's, you know, that's her am. saying up the you, smoothness. You might want to up the smoothness there. <laughs> um no, Roxy, I love that. I feel like that's hilarious. And I can see I can see how it might help for it to be Noted. smoother or not. Yeah. Like, let's just see it. where we're at. Like, where are yeah. we on the smoothness yeah, uh, toggle? I, <laughs> I think you're right. You know, it's interesting when you up that the way you smoothness. don't have to work as hard to get it smooth. You know, it's like, are we really? It slows down. There's a little bit of tracking. Mm. And it slows down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Naturally. But yeah. maybe I'll, I'll, we'll find a happier just medium. Checking. Yeah, yeah. For but I'm sure. going to add and in a little bit of like variation because it's not just. Mm. Because they're not the yeah. most even lines, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's and Cody in the chat has a really good point that mm -hmm. the dots have helped a lot with the depth that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Like because the dots on this one that you're working on are big and the ones on the smaller sharks right. are smaller. And it kind of corrects us from thinking those are baby sharks, um, right. whale sharks. Um, so mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. Good catch there, Cody. Thank you. Thanks. Cody. Yeah, I think the contrast kind of helps. I'm like it, yeah. Um, you know, make it pop off the background too, because right. the background and the color of the whale shark are very similar right now. Yeah, so it's making it a little flat. I think that contrast is kind of bringing it forward a little bit more. It's funny how you, you're doing these dots and you're thinking like, is there a faster way to do this? And in the time it takes, sometimes for you to like figure out a system of copy and paste and slide and merge your layers you could have done all those dots just by the old school putting them <laughs> that's down that's true you know? that's true so, especially because you're following like a curvature yeah, so it's exactly. not as easy as just dropping in like a mm -hmm. bunch of dots yeah it's a little right. bit more methodical yeah. but you can kind of zone out do you ever feel like when you're doing things that are repetitive like this you kind of yeah. like enter this meditative zone yeah definitely that's that, when a podcast comes in that's podcast time <laughs> exactly. that's what i was gonna say you can say. just like zone out listen to someone else talking or watch a stream like this and listen in the background as you were yeah you know? have no thoughts of your own right you're I just gotta, like it's empty up here <laughs> i've got to watch my resting um drawing face because it'll just turn into like <laughs> yes <laughs> or you ever get really close to the screen yeah or just squinting like too long when you can just up. zoom in yeah you know that we're on yeah. we're on fresco for ipad you can just zoom in everyone you zoom. don't have to be so close okay this is a question that for is the everyone beauty of working digitally as as we all work digitally nowadays how many times do you go up to a, a analog image and try and pinch zoom it i do it all the time so embarrassing. sometimes I because i don't use the keyboard because i know you have a keyboard there yeah. and that's cool but oh, I, right. use, I use the two finger double tap yeah. And sometimes when I'm working on something <gasps> traditionally, I'm like, tap, tap. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> I can't just undo that. You I can't have undo gone your, paint, your paintbrush. <laughs> yes, I cannot just undo something I just oh, drew. Oh, if only we could. Yes, it we'll get there, fun. I'm sure, someday. But <laughs> that is a really, really good question. Let us know in the chat if you've um, tried to do some digital... <laughs> Un What's tapping. it called? Um, gestures. Tapping or gestures? There you go yeah. Yeah. on your paper. Zoom in. Oh, I'm getting yeah. into. I'm getting into Scroll. the flow now. It's quite embarrassing, even if you're by yourself. <laughs> you're just like, wow, I'm a fool, <laughs> right? <laughs> yep, I just did that. Ooh. It's like yes. someone needs more sleep. <laughs> yes, yeah. Cody says she's she's doing that too. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, um, yeah, I know it. It is super embarrassing, and I've also done it to photos, like real mm -hmm. photos. Like you yeah. want to like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold up. Oh wait, I can't. <laughs> I mean, if everyone's doing it, maybe that's just a problem with society. We need to make photos that are real photos that do that now. Yeah, just need I, to, I like, can see it. Just need to go all the way to the digital dark side. Oh my gosh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Okay. Well, that would be actually a question for the audience too. How mm -hmm. many people mm. work primarily digitally or primarily in traditional media? You know, I feel like a lot of people maybe dabble in both, but you know, is it yes. one or the other? Which, like, are you which are one? You here 
watching because you're, you know, starting to lean more digitally and you're mm -hmm. wanting to learn more about it. Um, or if you're just a digital native. And so this is just True, a jam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let us know in the chat which one you're gravitating towards. Personally, I definitely feel like I straddle both. Mm -hmm. um, I never finish one without the other. I feel like I do a lot of things traditional and then to the iPad or iPad and then finish it up traditionally somehow. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where I'm at. I'm loving how this is all coming together. It's Let's beautiful. Let's see how it's helping the image along. Just as a heads up, Ooh. soon we'll be going in for our artist spotlight. Ooh. I'm so excited. Um, it's going to be in about a minute or so. So you can okay. it kind of it works out perfectly if you want to wrap up this uh, shark that you're on. All right. Yay. I think that's pretty much. Yeah, there's not much cool. detail on their tails, right? No, just there's a few more dots. And I think we're ready to check out this other artist. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm excited. Also, I'm excited. Inside. Yes, I love her work. Oh, we have someone in the comments saying that they do try to do a keyword search when they're reading a book. Like they're, they like <laughs> want to look up a word and then they can't because it's not a digital book. Um, that's a really good one. I feel like that happens. To, you know, you can look up dictionary definitions or yeah. whatever. Yeah, like, a good one. Define yeah. tense quote or whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's like a real book. <laughs> yes. No, I can definitely identify with that person. I'm yeah. a big reader, especially at night. And that's something. Yeah. I, I can like see that happening for for sure. Thanks for your feedback, Kirk. So we all feel less alone in our I know, I feel better minds, already. right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's time right. for our artist spotlight, everyone. So um, just a little reminder, after the artist spotlight, we'll have about 10 more minutes here with Wooden Wave. So get your questions in now, drop them in the chat now. That way, when we come back from the artist spotlight, we still have some time to discuss and answer all of your questions. But for today, today's artist spotlight, let's see if we can um, maneuver over to that page where we're going to share the person's art. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Sure. It's happening. Go here. Uh -huh. We're going to show you guys this person's art. It's amazing. Remember, you can always highlight an artist through the artist spotlight. Um, okay, here we are. We have Diver Amon. Um, to, I'm so excited to be uh, sharing this person's work. They're an illustrator and a diver, and they create a lot of work about the ocean and fish. Um, and it makes a lot of sense for today's stream, which is all about uh, ocean conservation. I can't say this word, conservancy, I think is how you say it. Um, I have it in my mind. But um, yeah, let's pop in and take a look at their work, guys. Open open up any any items Ooh, here. That fun. Oh, so, I love those fish. So neat. I love the pattern so too. It's very satisfying, right? You can like feel like you're watching this little sliver of the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much detail going into this fish. Really reminds me of the... Um, the piece that you're creating today, right? Like you can see yeah, all that texture of the fish, mm -hmm. um, the light. Highlights. Mm -hmm. This is actually one of our son's favorite fish. Yeah. <laughs> so that's oh, yeah. why I what, was drawing What fish it. is it? Do you know? Yeah, in Hawaii, we would call this an ulua, but the um, scientific name or regular name, name is Trevelli or Jack fish. And yeah. they're, they're Trevally. Trevally, Trevally. And they're- Are they uh, big? They're big. They can get really big. They can be small. Okay. But giant trevally. Giant trevally. Yeah. And they um, they live on the reefs and they're kind of the alpha fish of the reef besides a shark. So oh, they can wow. be kind of the bullies. Yeah. Are they the aggressive reef. fish? Like if I ran into it, would it like... They would... would no. It'd be hard to find one in the first Got place. It. Okay, okay. Um, a little yeah, bit more elusive. A, we're not talking piranhas but... here, but they're they are. Um, That's what I was thinking. You, they're you just, read my yeah, mind. they're not a, they're not like hunting you or anything. Like that, but <laughs> they're just hunting smaller fish. Their, if you were a small fish, they'd, yes, they'd want you. You'd be in trouble yeah. if you're a little guppy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, this piece is amazing. There's so much detail in the line work and the texture and mm -hmm. all those little bubbles. But what else do we oh. have here? Wallpaper. Wallpapers. Oh, wallpapers. Whoa, nice. those are super cool. Snapper. Uh, what's the other one? The uku. Yeah, that's... I don't know my way around fish, but I feel like you know there's so right. many here, um, and they're they just look oh, like so go. realistic. Look at that. That's the one that she just created, oh, that we just saw. Sorry. 
um amazing a lot a lot of different kinds of fish um let's see oh that piece there looks um a little different the one in the center there and with there, the yeah. reef let's take a look Oh, there you go. Yes. Oh, and this is her Perfect. piece for the Ocean Agency. Yeah. Yes, because everyone can submit a piece for the hashtag Create Waves campaign. Uh, this seems to be her piece for for the project for the campaign. This is so cool. There's so much happening. There's some sharks there. Yeah. I think those are sharks. I'm not. Yep. Those are little are. leopard <laughs> sharks, probably. I'm like, am I? Am I wrong? <laughs> I think so. It says and that the um. It's a self-portrait called the Verte uh, vortex. Vortex. Yeah. Some coral Ooh. reefs. This artwork represents the continuation of life in the ocean for future generations. I've been super fortunate to have grown up in New Zealand in and around the ocean for most of my life. So their connection to it is really strong. I love that. This is beautiful. Um, and there's so much texture and light and cool compositioning happening in yeah. this piece. I love it. It's amazing. I like the way the, um, the sparkle of the water is kind of overlaying on the leopard sharks. Yes. And, the, and bottom. So that's a really cool way. Yeah. To... There's also like that shadow of that yeah. same like grid uh -huh. happening. There's a yeah. lot to, to give it some depth. Um, what else can we see let's from this? Check them out. Yeah, let's, let's bounce let's out. Go back. Ooh, oh, look, she's a whale shark piece. Whale shark. Let's check out the whale shark one. Wow. Oh, All my right. gosh. Nice. Let's see. Wow. Yep. She's there, at the whale there it is. So, so, so cool. There's the dots <laughs> and the ridges. Yes. Oh, it's a kelp forest. And that's maybe referencing awesome. uh, she's from New Zealand. And yeah. they have colder water, so they probably have kelp forests over there. That's it so looks cool. Like she dives I'm, all I'm over. so glad that there's like this, there's like so many um, references to the whale shark and to what we've been working on for the past couple of days, too. Yeah. Um, ooh, I'm really interested in that one on the right. That like, um, this one? Yes, that, yeah. But it's a video. I don't know if we'll, oh, oh, there we go amazing Fine. look at all of that oh there's a dots lots of dots more dots they those dots also feel very luminescent yes yeah that's cool so and it's cool to create like a school of fish because they all sort of are moving in a similar direction they create a form in the way that they're spiraling. yes the idea mm -hmm. of movement that's really good mm -hmm. Ooh, there's some more sharks yes Just open got... open something else up oh amazing Oh, look at all those different kinds of prints. These videos are a really nice way to just see like the overall like uh, that, kind of yeah. artwork. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of different compositions. Push people towards uh, maybe if you have a, a print store or you have mm -hmm. your uh, your web shop. Right. Exactly. Give you guys can that. check out her work on the stream. Go check out mm -hmm. her shop. Um, what else do we have that. here? Well, here, let's go. I like this one because okay. it looks like it's a night shot. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Midnight snoop. You Midnight right. snoop. I like Going that. for a snoop. Yeah. Uh, this is so cool. And I feel like um, it has some of the elements of the ones, the one we saw before, the self portrait wow. kind of one, mm -hmm. but in a totally different composition and, but like Good similar that. textures, right? So what's really cool is she's above and below the water. There's yeah. parts of her body that are above because she's at the surface. And there's parts that are below. So she's working with transparency and, and depth. Mm -hmm. And then I really love the implication of that flashlight. Stuff. Yes, mm -hmm. that is really cool. And that like automatically helps us, the viewer, understand that this is at night, right? Like night that there's like a, a contrast because um, yeah. maybe without that, you would just have right. a harder time reading it. Yeah, you might think it's underwater, too. Yeah, um, very nice. Super, super cool. And there's like fishes in there. There's like oh, a yeah. shark on the right. There's a hidden shark little. There. Yes, hidden little gems all throughout oh. this piece, which is, you know, the ocean is like that. So that's. Very, right. very cool. I think she's working with the idea of that bioluminescence. Yeah. So the reef uh, glows or the mm -hmm. the um, plank. It's usually algae based, but anyway, so they'll, they'll glow. Or when the coral is um, spawning, it'll. Ooh, yeah, it'll interesting. Glow. I've never heard that term before, um, but yeah. that's cool. Not I I love it, and I like that. Um, there's like little fish that she's. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Highlighting with the flashlight. Amazing, amazing work here from Divermon Art. Um, I love it. This this was amazing. Anything else you guys want to comment on on their work? We've had they have so much amazing work to look at. Yeah, no, it's so cool. I just love like the color usage and um, you know bringing attention to nature is mm -hmm. always um, needed. Needed really in this world. Yeah. Smart, yeah. smart usage of templates. So the phone template, oh, that's yeah. really cool. 
another just other ways to like right. showcase your art right. online i feel like mm-hmm. um, you can tell there's a struggle shadow. with that yeah over here even the mm-hmm. implication of a shadow over that those prints mm-hmm. it just kind of gives you a sense of like oh if i have this print up yep. in my patio and i have like a, a palm frond shadow it has yes. a it has a mood to it right mm-hmm. yeah you could be like oh i could see this fitting into your house and so's house right mm-hmm. or my house or this space so it's just another cool way to sell the idea of your yeah. artwork um mm-hmm. beyond just the artwork itself how you kids present it is one. equally important <laughs> i know i was just thinking that that's how i was drawn to it our yeah. kid would love this yeah, print. Our kid would go <laughs> we might have to I visit her online shop. yeah he was just <laughs> yes kidding, let's yeah. all go visit diver mon's online shop um, check out all their cool 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 work um this has been amazing i'm so glad we were able to highlight this person's art um it's so cool and it's so on topic for today's live stream um before we move on you guys don't forget to submit your recommendations for creatives to highlight for our next artist spotlight just head over to the artist spotlight tab at the top of the chat on behance to send your nominations if you're watching on youtube you may not see this little um tab but if you jump over to our behance live stream you'll see the tab right there to submit your nominations and maybe we'll highlight your work next time so just drop your nominations in um and you never know okay now we're back at this back. piece i'm we're inspired back. yeah seeing her so nice to take her a use of light a little creative yes we've got we've got a little time what we, what we have like maybe 10, 10 minutes we have like okay. 10 minutes 10 All working right. minutes 15 Let's full do some minutes furious um, dot making <laughs> some furious dot making Making rain dots yes <laughs> i guess this is this is how it goes where like um in the real world you would have maybe a whole a whole yeah. week just to do mm-hmm. the color part so you know we're <laughs> we're working in a sped up fashion here <laughs> in adobe into Fresco. the process yes into the process yes yes adobe yes dots. for for those who are just joining us we're here with matt and roxy of wooden wave are working on this Hi. whale shark piece matt. on adobe fresco on the ipad uh matt is furiously now making these dots um I have, nice. there's, like a, there's like a soundtrack he's getting stressed he's like oh no <laughs> no don't get stressed no 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 make them nice. these are gonna look great these are gonna look great they look pretty good when you when you zoom out <laughs> That's, that is the beauty, right? right it's like yeah. you can zoom in and then perfect. do this, and then when you zoom out, you're like, that looks great. Yes. I do, <laughs> do want to see all of those stripes and everything because I feel it'll really light it up. But that's true. That's a lot of those are a okay, lot of stripes. Go for it. Okay, go for it. <laughs> and we too. also have the stars too, the which stars. are even more dots. So for anyone who maybe missed the concept of this drawing earlier, um, it's like the whale sharks are what are we saying like swimming or diving towards the mm-hmm. sky slash yeah. sea it's conceptually well, let's, let's say know. we'll have stars up here we can there actually there you go yeah. oh look at those stars coming together so fast <laughs> you know there's a there's an interesting um randomness to doing stars so that they don't feel like they're on on a grid and i i really i really feel strongly about like when i do my stars i'm always like don't make it seem like they're all you know, like right Evenly now, evenly space. Yeah, like this looks like it's on a, on a grid. You know what I mean? Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, you wouldn't want that unless you're trying to make like a formation, right? right like exactly. A little dipper or something. Yeah. So it's a it's a kind of like a pattern of like to put some. It's really... a random quirk that he has because <laughs> we've done a lot of uh, paintings with night skies, and that's his pet peeve is when <laughs> they like sometimes we're talking about yeah we get into that meditative zone and it looks like almost like graph paper or something where the right. pots are too regular right. and he's just like oh no they got too regular you know like they need yeah. to be a very random, yes you yes know, yeah. like bigger smaller close <laughs> the it's the it's the um the tendency to want to like spread out and right. that right. ends up becoming a, a pattern after a while so mm-hmm. it's like too evenly covered yeah, right? you need, like not. sparse areas and then right. denser areas i'll put a big right. one and then i'll put another big one then i'll put one kind of next like to a it tiny little friend yeah yes <laughs> everyone in the chat totally agrees <laughs> with you that it has to, it's a very specific kind of random yeah. um it's the it's the right random that you're after right. and it can be right. very difficult 
Oh, I'm glad um, we're doing that now. Because... It's like your mind wants to put. Things yes, over everyone me. in the chat is is talking about this, like agreeing with you, Matt. So I think I think it, it's everyone's on on team Matt here. <laughs> no, <I'm Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have this person here from Clev. Their their name in the chat is Clever Devlin. Um, their suggestion here is draw dots in spirals to prevent the look of rose. Ooh. So maybe if you were to go like that, and then okay. like yeah. So okay. that kind of make, and I guess that would also give you it that atmosphere closer. too, right? It's just a way to not, instead of our mind, like it goes linear, Flat. like writing, yeah. you know? Yeah. So when you do it in a spiral, it automatically randomizes. And it gets before, tighter you know? too, as it gets closer, maybe. So you, you'll, you'll vary up the width. Well, it doesn't yes. have to get tighter, I guess. Like, well, I guess it has to. It might give you the the perspective of being like in a circular atmosphere. Yeah. You know, like whatever it is, it's that working. could happen too. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. For the yes, amazing <laughs> suggestion from clever Devlin. Yeah. Um, Very clever. That was yes. super clever, and I'm going to be using that in real life. Yeah, I'm that. That's what I'm <laughs> there doing. we go. There we go. Remember, guys, drop your questions. If you have questions for these two, you can drop them in the chat. Uh, whether you're on YouTube or on Behance, drop your question in the chat, and we'll get it answered for you. Um, yeah. Before we wrap up the stream, get your questions in. Cool. I, like um, stars coming in. I, I am loving mm -hmm. these stars. Um, I think it's so cool and already made it, like, sold the idea a little bit more. Mm -hmm. right yeah there's something magical about stars you know it's just like this skyscape that makes you feel so small and yet part of the universe at the same time mm -hmm. and the, <laughs> the stars the stars, also right? kind of could be perceived as like water bubbles mm -hmm. right there's like a lot of um similarities between the sea and the sky uh when you're talking about drawing it you know what i'm just nice. thinking right now is inspired off of um divermon's feed where she did that one flashlight now yeah. i'm not gonna do that but what if we have the idea of like the stars that are on the dots that are on the head of the whale shark are just kind of exploding outward into our actual stars and you'll notice yeah. that i actually moved the dot layer up above the line layer so it, like it was down here got it now I moved it up top here, and that's gonna allow us to to have the stars feel like they're on. They're like lifting from yeah. the whale. Ooh, Ooh. Wait, I more. kind of like that idea because we're we're talking about the concept of the Hubble telescope algorithm right. identifying the stars and the pattern on the whale shark. Yeah. So that's kind of cool for Wait. them to like lift. Kind of fun. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Now so it feels like they're more like in the sky almost feels like they're floating right. upwards yeah Ooh, so they're wow. not restricted by the outline of the shark necessarily but that's they... cool and it's gonna help you fill some of that those like spaces if you wanted to right yeah so now that i have all these dots what if i did go ahead and do a selection of those stars and then copy and paste because that'll help yes. that'll help save some time let's work Smart. Work smart. We have so many tools at our disposal here in Adobe Fresco. Ooh. May as well Ooh. use them. Mm -hmm. It's so nice when you learn a new tool and then you're able to apply it. It can be life changing. It you really, know? really can. <laughs> Whenever you see a video and someone shows you something new <laughs> and you're just like, wow, where have you been all my life? And then yeah. you can start applying it every time you, you know, add a tool to your toolbox. It's just, mm. yeah, it just helps you, you out a little that. bit further. Um, Kirk oh. Fetzer in the chat is loving this idea of the lifting um, nice. stars. They said, cool idea, um, communication vibe too. I think, you know, it goes with that idea yeah. that we were saying. Right. So Ooh, into awesome. it. Thanks. One layer must be selected. Let's get out of that. I was. What, what's going on here, Matt? Give me, I don't know. Uh, I got that to confused face right now. <laughs> he's trying to figure <laughs> okay, out. Okay, so done let's go done all right there we go okay, the dot copying so it looks like we got a mm. that's where i, I kind of wish i could see what the layer names were got it where are my dots mainly Not dun, 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 dun. we've lost the dots we oh you know the why dots, they're right? all sort of oh did we draw on the wrong layer they, there's multiple layers so let's go ahead and merge merge them down okay Merge down and let's merge this one down as well. Merge, merge down. Where it's nice that? to be able to merge down and, and kind of clean things up sometimes. Do I see merge down? Oh, maybe I can't. Hmm. 
Isn't that twelve on that Is one? it a group? Marriage layers in group. Okay, that's good. Go. And then I there can go, go marriage down. Boom. Now let's see. Is it all if the stars are on one the, layer? Okay. If okay. Anybody all the stars the and the dots. Nice. Yeah. So this is this little triple dot button over here on the right. That is merges all the way on the bottom. Yeah, merge on, merges all the way on the bottom. And then if you select your layer, usually you're, it's also the same thing. So I don't know, yes, we're connecting the dots here. No, that's <laughs> I just um, stole Go. that from Clever Devlin, who just commented that. So oh. shout out to <laughs> Clever, Thanks, Clever buddy. for coming in with the clever puns. Yeah. Here. Yay! We are big fans of puns, so <laughs> bring them all. So it's welcomed. It's welcomed. Amazing, amazing. Yes. Yeah, we thought of the name of the Punishers, but <laughs> I don't know what application that has. But so, that sounds there's a pun off. That's aggressive. <laughs> pun, pun <right. laughs> Well, so, actually, when I was on, uh, was making, on it. making It, I was on the show Making It, which is kind of a side. So it's Making Amy It. Amy Poehler and Nick yeah. Offerman, and it's like a craft show. On NBC. On NBC. And I was on there as one of the contestants, and they are like master pun uh, craftsmen enthusiasts. and women. Yes, enthusiasts. Yeah. But Amy and Nick are just like well, they on have the pun craft. game. Yes. They have yeah. these pun offs as right. part of the show. Mm. Yeah. Got it. If you go to Making It's uh, Instagram, they have those those yes uh, and you can check that out right on your instagram too i know you posted a lot about it on your instagram about the the whole the show and your experience yeah. there too yeah anyone who wants to check it out okay, okay. so i, I yes flipped, tell me what's going on here I what, what you're gonna do yeah so i mirrored um i just wanted to create a few more stars and i'm gonna make them a little smaller I'm gonna okay kind of spatter them uh throughout the piece just to sort of speed up our star creation process um press done areas outside will be cropped that's there's fine. a lot of words that are kind of related to spatter like spatter splatter and then also S smatter Spat spatter smatter splatter 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 Why word, so word play basically coming in thing. here Cody oh, says yeah. that she loves making it so you know you have some oh, fans in the chat thank um, you Yes, perfect, perfect, perfect. And then uh, we have fun. one last pun I'm going to read from Clever. Okay. <laughs> it's all pun and games until someone loses an eye. So there you go. So this go. is um, so true. So <laughs> true. Just as a heads up, you guys, you have about five minutes left before okay. we have to wrap up the stream. Oh, so maybe take a couple minutes here to finish it up in a sense um, or, okay. or give us a little preview of what you think um, is next. Right. What, what maybe you're, you're still going to do offline. Um, yeah, offline, I think we're probably going to go ahead and figure out um, a little bit with this white space, what we're going to do, mm -hmm. um, probably clean up the pencil lines. Okay. And, but definitely I would want to continue to add in those, you know, those yellow lines and all these sharks to kind of give it that, uh, Detail. luminescence. Maybe yeah. one other thing is just, um, do some smudging and that's one, one little brush tool that I haven't talked about, but that smudge tool up in the top left hand corner where I just toggled, mm -hmm. um, you can go ahead and use uh, uh, that to kind of blend your um, background color. So that's something. I oh, was, let's I see. Give us a little on. preview since we have some time. All right. So. Mm, ooh, oh, nice. Okay. It just yeah, kind of like bit. moves it around. Move it around. Yeah. And because I cool. used it, oh, maybe not that particular media let's go back to our favorites Oop. recents oh i guess because it's smudge i don't have any recents so let's go to painting and since we're such a fan of um saison saison <laughs> all right size strength all these factors play with it just make the brush uh, your own right okay. <laughs> Look at how that sort of whoa, that was way more drastic. Gives the implication of like bubbles and yeah. Oh, interesting. Cool. It's got a little that's got really a little cool. Lag. It's a good, ooh, that's fun. That has a cool texture to it. Are you thinking of leaving the white areas white, or um, did you have something in mind for that? Mm, let's let's default to the color expert here. Oh me, putting <laughs> <laughs> me on the spot. On the spot. <laughs> what do you think? Well, what, what, I would what? want I would want it to be a bit lighter but not white mm -hmm. but um we can do that right kind now. of going to the i would say how we usually when we do colors we have like the dark tone and the light tone okay um, 
I would what? go to the lighter tone of what, it. Do you think a warmer color or a cooler mm. color? Because we can just I'd drop like that right now. I'd say like from Jack's poster, the light tone with that one works. Since okay, let's, use the dark tone. let's see. Where is... Oh, where'd it go? You yeah. might have um, uh, hidden the layer on accident Ooh. at some point. Did you merge it with something? Oh, I probably merged it. <laughs> oh, you merged it, it That's away. Right. That's, That's okay. Right. We'll just use... <laughs> Let's go ahead and pick a pick a color from our from one of the photos. Yeah, that's a cool yeah. little trick. Okay, so I'll pick um, maybe something light and lighter than that. Yeah, what are you thinking? Maybe bluer because it's going very green. Okay, there. Just to give it a shot. We've yeah. got yes, a give it a shot. Left. Give it a shot. Right, here we go. Try something for contrast. Um, You're gonna fill the layer. Do you have a new layer there? Or are you doing it in the yeah, same layer? Yeah, that's a new layer. Okay. Good. And, and it's safe. It. Yeah. Ooh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Like that. It it makes it like just kind of gives it a little bit more of a finishing touch, right? Let's get rid of there this color, color thingy on the corner there. And Perfect. if we were to zoom in and kind of, yeah, you can kind of see how that's. Yes, this is vibe, lovely. But... I feel like you got through so much today in terms of color and yeah. finishing up the sharks and the sky and the stars. There was so much. You went over color the smudge tool different the directs the wand the direct selection wands um and just how to use the different transparencies to uh color in your work so you've shown us matt so much both the two of you have been amazing at sharing information about murals and everything so if you miss that be sure to watch the replay to get a little bit more information about their mural process their collaborative process we talked about yesterday so there has been so many nuggets of wisdom here on the stream i can't thank you guys enough for sharing everything and for making this amazing piece to bring awareness to whale sharks everywhere around the world thank you guys so much for that Thanks for having we us. We had a blast. That was so yes, fun. Yes, it's been amazing. So thank you everyone who joined us throughout the stream. Thank you once again, Matt and Roxy. Be sure to follow them at Wooden Wave Art on Instagram and on Behance. And now stick around for the Premiere Pro Creative Challenge with Wojtek Plitcha. And join us tomorrow morning with Adobe Evangelist Kyle T. Webster for Brush Hour starting at 8 a.m. Pacific. Don't miss that. You'll learn a lot of cool stuff about brushes. And that's all I've got for you guys. Guys, see you guys next time. Thanks so much, Adobe friends, for hanging out with us. Um, this has been amazing. Be sure to follow them everywhere. Yay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.